And we again welcome you to Good Morning SK and Sonia. And of course, uh, we want to congratulate you on your recent appointment as counselor at the Permanent Commission of St. Kitts and Nevis to the Organization of American States. And what can you tell us about what's involved in that position? Good morning, Jamie, and thank you very much for having me on Good Morning SKN. It's an absolute delight to be here, and thank you so much for your kind words of commendation on my new role as counselor at the permanent mission of St. Kitts and Nevis to the Organization for American States here in Washington, D.C. As you may be aware, the Organization for American States is made up of 34 countries um, within the Caribbean, North America, um, South America, and the entire Latin America and Caribbean region, including Canada and the United States. And it's a hemispheric body where countries come together to discuss issues and resolve matters that are affecting our region. And here I serve in a technical advisory capacity to our ambassador, um, His Excellency Everson Hull, who leads our delegation here. So I provide great support to him. And um, it's an absolute pleasure for me at this time. And right now, St. Kitts and Nevis is actually chairing the Permanent Council, which is a, a distinguished body of this organization. So it's a, a great joy to be here this time to lend that critical support that is needed as we guide the proceedings of the Permanent Council meeting. Okay, Ms. Body, so you explain to us what your position involves. So now I'm going to ask you, how is the cold treating you? How's the cold? <laughs> She's a well girl, by the way. You know what? I always see myself a Caribbean girl. Um, you know, I love the tropical climate, but I'm adjusting quite well to, you know, the climate here. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, I don't think that there's any culture shock at all, you know, in, in knowing you. There's no culture shock being where you are. Uh, now, is there, Sonia? <laughs> culture shock? Well, fortunately, I've traveled quite a bit in the last decade. Um, from my early times as a, a youth ambassador and even serving in the parliament and working as a senior foreign service officer. So I wouldn't say there's any real culture shock. And I'm quite familiar with the United States. You got this. <laughs> Girl power? <laughs> Girl, woman power. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, your scholarship. And even before then, your ties hmm. to the village of Tabernacle. Yay. Yeah, okay, you, got to, you get to talk about that. Have a girl. I'll just set yes. it up. You talk all about that, so yeah, go right ahead. I mm -hmm. am a proud Tabernacle woman. I grew up in the beautiful <laughs> village of Tabernacle, 10 miles out of Bastia to the east, and I'm very happy to have been raised in that beautiful environment that has such great community support and, and an environment that really allowed me to thrive and to grow. And it was in a community where it really took a community to raise a child. So I had the benefit of the support and guidance of people all around our community. It was just not my grandmother. So I'm really happy and thankful to everybody within the Tabernacle community who over the years have continuously supported me and given me words of encouragement mm -hmm. as I've continued to grow as a young woman. You've also managed to give back to the community as well. Is that not true? That is certainly true. Yeah. I, I am passionate about giving back. My personal favorite quote is, I'm happy when I receive, but I'm even happier when I give back. And therefore, mm -hmm. in 2014, when I celebrated my 30th birthday, I decided I wanted to do something meaningful. I mean, the years prior to that, having finished university, I always gave prizes at the graduation ceremony of the Edgar T. Morris Primary School, which is formerly the Tabernacle Primary School, which I attended. But I decided I wanted to take it up a notch. And so in 2014, I launched a Sonia Body Promising Youth Leader Scholarship, where annually I award scholarships to a male and a female from the grade six who's transitioning to secondary school. And I provide them with school uniforms, school books, and the necessary school supplies to give them that added push and readiness to get ready for high school. Because I believe once they have a good start, they'll feel motivated to continue, you know, mm -hmm. um, striving for excellence. Yeah. And Many persons did that for me along the way, and I feel compelled, I feel duty-bound to give back because I can see the benefits of people's investment in me and who I've become, and I want to do that and inspire other young people as well. Good stuff. So, Ms. Body, you have earned degrees in public relations and international relations. What about no, these fields actually, appeal to you no, most? Sorry. I, I earned my first degrees in international relations and my master's in 
public administration. Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you were close. Yeah, we're delving into the professional yeah. realm. We are. We are. Yeah. We are. We are. <laughs> we <laughs> are. We are. Definitely. Okay, so now your previous, you, your previously, you previously held, sorry, a dual role. One was clerk of the National Assembly and the other was foreign service officer. Tell us a bit about how each, tell us a bit about each and how you were able to function in both roles. Ah, you know, I, I <laughs> was really privileged to have the opportunity to wear two professional hats over the last uh, five years serving mm -hmm. as a foreign service officer, um, then a senior foreign service officer, while also serving initially as deputy clerk and then clerk. So, um, Serving in the Parliament was an absolutely amazing, eye-opening, refreshing experience. I don't I think can see it in your people eyes. get the, <laughs> the opportunity to sit actually in mm -hmm. the middle of both the government and opposition and see them debate, you know, mm -hmm. with such passion, the issues yeah. that affect our country. And mm -hmm. so I was, I really deem it an honor and pleasure to having served there. But my role there was very administrative. I pretty much served mm -hmm. as a lead administrative um, officer there, guiding okay. the team in terms of ensuring that the members of parliament had all the necessary documents that okay. were required for each sitting, and also providing procedural guidance to the speaker and the members of parliament as to how proceedings should be conducted and what and what not should be allowed mm -hmm. during the sitting. Um, as a foreign service officer, again, um, it's a similar role to what I'm doing here now. Again, mm -hmm. I pretty much we engage with members of the international community. Um, a lot of my work involves, you know, daily interacting with countries all across the world who want to do business with St. Kitts and Nevis, who want to deepen their diplomatic relations with St. Kitts and Nevis, and see how we can provide opportunities for the socioeconomic benefit of all people. So it was an absolute delight. Uh, my last mm -hmm. role, was head of the bilateral scholarships and training division at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Aviation in my capacity as a senior foreign service officer. So I mm -hmm. was really responsible for ensuring that we maintain those key relationships with okay. each country and also okay. ensuring that we promote and articulate for more scholarships for our young people. Um, having benefited from several mm -hmm. scholarships over the years um, from both foreign governments and private sector entities. Mm -hmm. I see the need for more scholarships to be offered and I, I take it upon myself yeah. personally to advertise scholarships whenever I see them available. Mm -hmm. So I was really happy to work in that area and to provide guidance to the team working in that area because I can see how the benefits that can be derived if we maintain good relationships with other countries, um, mm -hmm. it definitely would translate to benefit for our people. Yeah. I see, I see your passion when you speak about scholarships, and that is very good for the, our youth coming up, because some it of is. us really can't afford to go to school, so the scholarship program yeah. is very well. Thank you so yeah, much, Ms. Body, for that. Yes, yeah, yeah, scholarships, scholarships are critically important, and they've mm -hmm. played a huge part in my personal and my professional development. I had my first scholarship at age 12, from the cable and wireless company. And <laughs> from that time, I just mm -hmm. received, I had a scholarship from cable and wireless for seven years, from first form to sixth form. While in sixth form, I had a scholarship from the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Then I pursued my undergraduate studies from a scholarship from the government of Mexico. Then I was oh, lucky nice. to have a scholarship from the, the British government. I had the Chevening scholarship. I also benefited from professional development scholarships from the OAS, and I pursued a course in international law in Brazil, and I also did a course in quantitative and qualitative techniques in data analysis mm -hmm. for public policy in nice. Colombia, again, by mm -hmm. the OAS. So there are many, many, many scholarship opportunities out there, okay. much more than before, and I want uh -huh. young people to realize that, because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, when you've benefited from a scholarship and you've finished your studies, the beauty about it is you do not owe the bank. Yeah, so you exactly. can go to your professional life feeling a bit yeah. more relaxed, more relieved, and you can now start focusing more on other goals that you have to pursue. But when you have those student loans, it really becomes a bit burdensome. And I, I do mm -hmm. hear the cries from my friends, and I really want less of our young people to have to deal with that so they can be able to acquire other things in life. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's great 
that a lot more scholarships are offered today, but our people have to be willing to make the sacrifice yeah. also to apply for these scholarships because people yeah. think nobody's going to serve you anything on a platter. If you're going to get no. a plate, you're not going to get a bag of rice. And exactly. so sometimes you have to actually <laughs> write an essay, go through an interview process. But mm -hmm. I believe the sacrifice, I, 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 I can't say I believe, I know the sacrifice you do. You is do. definitely yeah. worth it. I, <laughs> I am testimony of that. <laughs> So I'm, I'm really grateful. And that is why I felt it was important as well for me to even launch my own scholarship. And I'm going to add something that I remember about two years ago, I think it was about 2019, my uncle at that time, rest his soul, um, because he passed last day, his name was Uncle Jedi. He had just received WhatsApp because he lived abroad. And I was so happy to share my link to the news article that I had given my scholarship, the Sonia Body Promising Youth Leader Scholarship for that year. And he immediately called me and he said, he said, where were you when I needed a scholarship? And he said, oh. he said, I warmed his heart so much because he said he remembered when he was about 15, 16, you know, the time for school was coming up. And he went to mama, which is, was my grandmother who raised, which was his mm -hmm. mom. And he said, mama, like, you know, I haven't seen any cool things mm -hmm. being purchased or anything. And she just bowed her head in shame. You know, she just didn't mm -hmm. have the resources to further finance his academic pursuits. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, he recognized that his educational journey was ending at age 16. And when, when we had that conversation, it, it just touched me so much. I said, if it's anything I continue to do in this life mm -hmm. while I'm alive, is to ensure that I continue with this Sonia Body Promising New Leader Scholarship, definitely. Um, one, in honor of all those who've invested in my personal development, yeah. also to do something that I know my grandmother would have wanted to do for her own children that she did not have the opportunity to do because of you know the way life was at that time and the economic circumstances. So I mm -hmm. definitely am passionate about scholarships and any way I can give back and I can assist, I will do so. Okay. Sonia, we are almost out of time, but there are two things that I need you to do for me very quickly. So we'll see how succinct we can be. Okay. One is to offer any advice to children who, like you, would have started from humble beginnings. Okay, very quickly, I want to say to every child in the world, I'm not going to limit you to just think it's a nevis. Once you remain focused, you are diligent, you continue working hard, you can achieve your dreams. Don't give up, don't be defined by your current circumstances. Continue to put in the work, and your hard work and your efforts are not going to always be overlooked. But also, it's important to have a great attitude. My grandmother always told me, rudeness will not take you around the world. And very often when I'm oh, traveling, yeah. <laughs> I always reflect on those words. So it's important to have a great attitude because you can have good academic qualifications. But if you have a bad attitude, it will certainly determine your altitude. So keep working hard, continue to press on, and continue being relentless in the pursuit of opportunities to achieve your goals.